The following are some of Aesop's best loved fables. The Goose with the Golden Eggs A certain man had the good fortune to possess a goose that laid him a golden egg every day, but dissatisfied with so slow an income, and thinking to seize the whole treasure at once, he killed the goose, and cutting her open, found her just what any other goose would be. Much wants more, and loses all. THE TOWN MOUSE AND THE COUNTRY MOUSE A country mouse invited a town mouse, an intimate friend, to pay him a visit and partake of his country fare. As they were on the bare ploughed lands, eating their wheat stalks and roots pulled up from the hedgerow, the town mouse said to his friend, You live here the life of the ants, while in my house is the horn of plenty. I am surrounded with every luxury, and if you will come with me, as I much wish you would, you shall have an ample share of my dainties. The country mouse was easily persuaded, and returned to town with his friend. On his arrival the town mouse placed before him bread, barley, beans, dried figs, honey, raisins, and last of all brought a dainty piece of cheese from the basket. The country mouse, being much delighted at the sight of such good cheer, expressed his satisfaction in warm terms, and lamented his own hard fate. Just as they were beginning to eat, some one opened the door, and they both ran off squeaking as fast as they could, to a hole so narrow that two could only find room in it by squeezing. They had scarcely again begun their repast, when some one entered to take something out of a cupboard, on which the two mice, more frightened than before, ran away and hid themselves. At last the country mouse, almost famished, thus addressed his friend. Although you have prepared for me so dainty a feast, I must leave you to enjoy it by yourself. It is surrounded by too many dangers to please me. Better a little in safety than an abundance surrounded by danger. THE MILKMAID AND HER POT OF MILK A maid was carrying her pail of milk to the farmhouse, when she fell amusing, the money for which this milk will be sold will buy at least three hundred eggs. The eggs, allowing for all mishaps, will produce two hundred and fifty chickens. The chickens will become ready for market when poultry will fetch the highest price, so that by the end of the year I shall have money enough to buy a new gown. In this dress I will go to the Christmas junketings, when all the young fellows will propose to me, but I will toss my head and refuse them every one. At this moment she tossed her head in unison with her thoughts, when down fell the milk-pot to the ground, and broke into a hundred pieces, and all her fine schemes perished in a moment. Count not your chickens before they are hatched. THE MAN AND THE SATYR A man and a satyr once formed a bond of alliance. One very cold wintry day, as they talked together, the man put his fingers in his mouth and blew on them. On the satyr inquiring the reason, he told him that he did it to warm his hands. Later on in the day they sat down to eat, the food prepared being quite scalding. The man raised one of his dishes towards his mouth and blew in it. On the satyr again inquiring the reason, he said that he did it to cool the meat. "'I can no longer consider you as a friend,' said the satyr. "'A fellow who with the same breath blows hot and cold I could never trust. "'A man who talks for both sides is not to be trusted by either.' THE MICE IN COUNCIL The mice summoned a council to decide how they might best devise means for obtaining notice of the approach of their great enemy, the cat. Among the many plans devised, the one that found most favor was the proposal to tie a bell to the neck of the cat, that the mice, being warned by the sound of the tinkling, might run away and hide themselves in their holes at his approach. But when the mice further debated who among them should thus bell the cat, 
there was no one found to do it. Let those who propose be willing to perform. THE FIGHTING COCKS AND THE EAGLE Two game cocks were fiercely fighting for the mastery of the farmyard. One at last put the other to flight. The vanquished cock skulked away and hid himself in a quiet corner. The conqueror, flying up to a high wall, flapped his wings and crowed exultingly with all his might. An eagle, sailing through the air, pounced upon him and carried him off in his talons. The vanquished cock immediately came out of his corner and ruled henceforth with undisputed mastery. Pride goes before destruction. THE LION AND THE MOUSE A lion was wakened from sleep by a mouse running over his face. Rising up in anger, he caught him and was about to kill him, when the mouse piteously entreated, saying, If you would only spare my life, I would be sure to repay your kindness. The lion laughed and let him go. It happened shortly after that that the lion was caught by some hunters, who bound him by strong ropes to the ground. The mouse, recognizing his roar, came up and gnawed the rope with his teeth, and setting him free, exclaimed, You ridicule the idea of my ever being able to help you, not expecting to receive from me any repayment for your favor. But now you know that it is possible for even a mouse to confer benefits on a lion. No one is too weak to do good. THE CROW AND THE PITCHER a crow, perishing with thirst, saw a pitcher, and, hoping to find water, flew to it with great delight. When he reached it, he discovered to his grief that it contained so little water that he could not possibly get at it. He tried everything he could think of to reach the water, but all his efforts were in vain. At last he collected as many stones as he could carry, and dropped them one by one with his beak into the pitcher, until he brought the water within his reach, and thus saved his life. Necessity is the mother of invention. THE FOX AND THE CROW A crow, having stolen a bit of meat, perched in a tree and held it in her beak. A fox, seeing her, longed to possess himself of the meat, and by a wily stratagem succeeded. "'How handsome is the crow!' he exclaimed, in the beauty of her shape and in the fairness of her complexion. "'Oh, if her voice were only equal to her beauty, she would deservedly be considered the queen of birds.' This he said deceitfully, having greater admiration for the meat than for the crow. But the crow, all her vanity aroused by the cunning flattery, and anxious to refute the reflection cast upon her voice, set up a loud caw, and dropped the meat. The fox quickly picked it up, and thus addressed the crow. My good crow, your voice is right enough, but your wit is wanting. He who listens to flattery is not wise, for it has no good purpose. THE SHEPHERD'S BOY AND WOLF A shepherd boy who watched a flock of sheep near a village brought out the villagers three or four times by crying, Wolf! Wolf! and when his neighbors came to help him, laughed at them for their pains. The wolf, however, did truly come at last. The shepherd boy, now really alarmed, shouted in an agony of terror, Pray do come and help me, the wolf is killing the sheep! But no one paid any heed to his cries. There is no believing a liar, even when he speaks the truth. THE FOX AND THE GRAPES A famished fox saw some clusters of ripe black grapes hanging from a trellised vine. She resorted to all her tricks to get at them, but wearied herself in vain, for she could not reach them. At last she turned away, beguiling herself of her disappointment, and saying, The grapes were sour and not ripe as I thought. Revile not things beyond your reach. THE ANTS AND THE GRASSHOPPER The ants were employing a fine winter's day in drying grain collected in the summer-time. A grasshopper, 
perishing with famine, passed by, and earnestly begged for a little food. The ants inquired of him, Why do you not treasure up food during the summer? He replied, I had not leisure. I passed the days in singing. Then they said, If you were foolish enough to sing all the summer, you must dance supperless to bed in the winter. Idleness brings want. THE FOX AND THE STORK The fox invited the stork to dinner, and provided nothing but a soup in a wide, shallow dish. This he could lap up with ease, but the stork, who could but just dip in the point of his bill, was not a bit better. A few days after he returned the compliment, and invited the fox, but suffered nothing to be brought to the table but some minced meat in a glass jar the neck of which was so deep and so narrow that, though the stork with his long bill could eat very well, all that the fox could do was to lick the brims. Reynard was heartily vexed, but owned that he had been used as he deserved. Those who practice cunning must expect to suffer by it. THE WOLF TURNED SHEPHERD a wolf, finding that the sheep were so afraid of him that he could not get near them, disguised himself in the dress of a shepherd, and, thus attired, approached the flock. As he came near he found the shepherd fast asleep. As the sheep did not run away, he resolved to imitate the voice of the shepherd. In trying to do so he only howled and awoke the shepherd. As he could not run away he was soon killed. Those who attempt to act in disguise are apt to overdo it. THE STAG AT THE POOL A stag saw his shadow reflected in the water, and greatly admired the size of his horns, but felt angry with himself for having such weak feet. While he was thus contemplating himself, a lion appeared at the pool. The stag betook himself to flight, and kept himself with ease at a safe distance from the lion, until he entered a wood and became entangled with his horns. The lion quickly came up with him and caught him. When too late he thus reproached himself, Woe is me! How have I deceived myself? These feet which would have saved me I despised and I gloried in these antlers which have proved my destruction. What is most truly valuable is often underrated. THE FOX AND THE MASK A fox entered the house of an actor, and, rummaging through all his properties, came upon a mask, an admirable imitation of a human head. He placed his paws on it, and said, What a beautiful head! Yet it is of no value, as it entirely wants brains. A fair face is of little use without sense. THE BEAR AND THE FOX A boar boasted very much of his philanthropy, saying that of all the animals he was the most tender in his regard for man, for he had such respect for him that he would not even touch his dead body. A fox, hearing these words, said with a smile to the bear, Oh, that you would eat the dead and not the living? We should not wait till a person is dead to give him our respect. THE WOLF AND THE LAMB A wolf, meeting with a lamb astray from the fold, resolved not to lay violent hands on him, but to find some plea which should justify to the lamb himself his right to eat him. He then addressed him, Sir, last year you grossly insulted me. Indeed, bleated the lamb in a mournful tone of voice. I was not then born. Then, said the wolf, you feed in my pasture. No, good sir, replied the lamb. I have not yet tasted grass. Again, said the wolf, you drink at my well. No, exclaimed the lamb. I never yet drank water for as yet my mother's milk is both food and drink to me. On which the wolf seized him and ate him up, saying, 
Well, I won't remain supperless, even though you refute every one of my imputations. The tyrant will always find a pretext for his tyranny, and it is useless for the innocent to try by reasoning to get justice, when the oppressor intends to be unjust. THE ONE-EYED DOE A doe, blind of an eye, was accustomed to graze as near to the edge of the sea as she possibly could to secure greater safety. She turned her eye toward the land that she might perceive the approach of a hunter or hound, and her injured eye toward the sea from which she entertained no anticipation of danger. Some boatmen, sailing by, saw her, and, taking a successful aim, mortally wounded her. Said she, O oh, wretched creature that I am, to take such precaution against the land, and, after all, to find this seashore, to which I had come for safety, so much more perilous. Danger sometimes comes from a source that is least suspected. THE DOG, COCK, AND FOX A dog and a cock, traveling together, took shelter at night in a thick wood. The cock perched himself on a high branch, while the dog found a bed at the foot of the tree. When morning dawned, the cock, as usual, crowed very loudly. A fox, hearing the sound and wishing to make a breakfast on him, came and stood under the branches, saying how earnestly he desired to make the acquaintance of the owner of so sweet a voice. "'If you will admit me,' said he, "'I should very much like to spend the day with you.' The cock said, "'Sir, do me the favor to go round and wake up my porter, that he may open the door and let you in.' On the fox approaching the tree, the dog sprang out and caught him and quickly tore him to pieces. Those who try to entrap others are often caught by their own schemes. THE MOUSE, THE FROG, AND THE HAWK A mouse, by an unlucky chance, formed an intimate acquaintance with a frog. The frog, one day intent on mischief, bound the foot of the mouse tightly to his own. Thus joined together, the frog led his friend toward the pool in which he lived, until he reached the very brink, when suddenly jumping in, he dragged the mouse in with him. The frog enjoyed the water amazingly, and swam croaking about as if he had done a meritorious action. The unhappy mouse was soon suffocated with the water, and his dead body floated about on the surface, tied to the foot of the frog. A hawk observed it, and, pouncing upon it, carried it up aloft. The frog, being still fastened to the leg of the mouse, was also carried off a prisoner, and was eaten by the hawk. Harm hatch, harm catch. THE DOG AND THE OYSTER A dog, used to eating eggs, saw an oyster, and, opening his mouth to its widest extent, swallowed it down with the utmost relish, supposing it to be an egg. Soon afterwards, suffering great pain in his stomach, he said, I deserve all this torment for my folly in thinking that everything round must be an egg. Who acts in haste repents at leisure. THE WOLF AND THE SHEPHERDS A wolf passing by saw some shepherds in a hut eating for their dinner a haunch of mutton. Approaching them, he said, What a clamor you would raise if I were to do as you are doing! Men are too apt to condemn in others the very things they practice themselves. THE HARES AND THE FROGS The hares, oppressed with a sense of their own exceeding timidity, and weary of the perpetual alarm to which they were exposed, with one accord, determined to put an end to themselves and their troubles by jumping from a lofty precipice into a deep lake below. As they scampered off in a very numerous body to carry out their resolve, the frogs, lying on the banks of the lake, heard the noise of their feet, and rushed helter-skelter to the deep water for safety. On seeing the rapid disappearance of the frogs, one of the hares cried out to his companions, 
stay my friends do not do as you intended for you now see that other creatures who yet live are more timorous than ourselves we are encouraged by seeing others that are worse off than ourselves the lion and the boar on a summer day when the great heat induced a general thirst a lion and a boar came at the same moment to a small well to drink they fiercely disputed which of them should drink first and were soon engaged in the agonies of a mortal combat on their stopping on a sudden to take breath for the fierce renewal of the strife they saw some vultures waiting in the distance to feast on the one which should fall first they at once made up their quarrel saying it is better for us to make friends than to become the food of crows or vultures as will certainly happen if we are disabled those who strive are often watched by them who will take advantage of their defeat to benefit themselves the mischievous dog a dog used to run up quietly to the heels of those he met and to bite them without notice his master sometimes suspended a bell about his neck that he might give notice of his presence wherever he went and sometimes he fastened a chain about his neck to which was attached a heavy clog so that he could not be so quick at biting people's heels the dog grew proud of his bell and clog and went with them all over the market-place an old hound said to him why do you make such an exhibition of yourself that bell and clog that you carry are not believe me orders of merit but on the contrary marks of disgrace a public notice to all men to avoid you as an ill-mannered dog those who achieve notoriety often mistake it for fame the quack frog a frog once made proclamation to all the beasts that he was a learned physician and able to heal all diseases a fox asked him how can you pretend to prescribe for others and you are unable to heal your own lame gait and wrinkled skin those who pretend that they can mend others should first mend themselves and then they will be more readily believed the ass the fox and the lion the ass and the fox having entered into a partnership together went out into the forest to hunt they had not proceeded far when they met a lion the fox approached the lion and promised to contrive for him the capture of the ass if he would pledge his word that his own life should be spared on his assuring him that he would not injure him the fox led the ass to a deep pit and contrived that he would fall into it the lion seeing that the ass was secured immediately clutched the fox and then attacked the ass at his leisure traitors must expect treachery the wolf and the sheep a wolf being sick and maimed called to a sheep who was passing and asked him to fetch some water from the stream for he said if you will bring me drink i will find means to provide myself with meat yes said the sheep if i should bring you draught you would doubtless make me provide the meat also hypocritical speeches are easily seen through the cock and the jewel a cock scratching for food for himself and his hens found a precious stone on which he said if thy owner had found thee and not i he would have taken thee up and have set thee in the first estate but i have found thee for no purpose i would rather have one barley corn than all the jewels in the world the raven and the swan a raven saw a swan and desired to secure for himself a like beauty of plumage supposing that his splendid white color arose from his washing in the water in which he swam the raven left the altars in the neighborhood of which he picked up his living and took up his abode in the lakes and pools but cleansing his feathers as often as he would he could not change their color while through want of food he perished change of habit cannot alter nature the lioness 
a controversy prevailed among the beasts of the field as to which of the animals deserved the most credit for producing the greatest number of whelps at a birth they rushed clamorously into the presence of the lioness and demanded of her the settlement of the dispute and you they said how many sons have you at a birth the lioness laughed at them and said why i have only one but that one is altogether a thoroughbred lion the value is in the worth not in the number end of section one